Have you ever sat on your couch, grabbed your remote, turned on the TV, and got in the fright of your life? All of a sudden, on comes a loud movie with a terrifying scene, complete with those pounding drums and dramatic strings. You immediately freak out and grab your remote, press mute, and breathe a sigh of relief. If this has ever happened to you, it's happened to me plenty of times for some reason, have you ever noticed what continues to play out on that television screen? Yeah, that really scary movie narrative without the music feels a lot less scary. It's been said that music is what feelings sound like. Music is this amazing drug, right, that shifts us from one mindset to another. And when we find the right song in the right moment, you know, your brain absolutely loves it. But what about the power of lyrics? I mean, as common as lyrics are, it feels like they take a bit of a backseat to the music. Well, you may not consider yourself as a lyrics person, but you can't really deny the impact that both music and words have in society. I mean, look at the very famous Billboard 100 charts. Out of the past 500 songs that have ever gone to that number one spot on the Billboard charts, all of them have had lyrics except for just one. There was one instrumental track back in 2013. But I don't know about you, I remember far more songs from 2013 that had lyrics than ones without. I mean, who could forget Blurred Lines? Anyone? Yeah, it was that song that everyone loved dancing to <laughs> until we stopped and listened to the message. I'm a terrible dancer, by the way, so that's why I play piano. Um, there'll be no more of that. Um, it's funny with that song because uh, those really, I guess, antisocial and creepy lyrics kind of went under the radar. At the time, there was a bit of a pushback against the song. But with all the controversy, Blurred Lines still hit that number one spot on the Billboard charts. It seems like the music was just too catchy for people to resist. So if music is so irresistible, do lyrics even matter? Well. What we do know is that some lyrics can make us feel more aggressive, destructive, and hostile. There was one experiment, a very weird experiment, where participants had to listen to aggressive music with misogynist lyrics. And then, in a seemingly unrelated experiment, these same participants were actually asked to apply hot sauce on sandwiches that were made for both men and women. And uh, because these participants were primed with these misogynist lyrics, guess which sex received more of the uncomfortable hot sauce? That's right, the females. And weird, weird experiments like this is probably what drew me to uh, undertake a PhD in experimental psychology with a focus on emotion science. But experiments like this hot sauce study still leave me wondering. I mean, what about those songs that sure have questionable lyrics? but don't sound aggressive. What about those fun, catchy, danceable songs like Blurred Lines? Okay, I'm not gonna dance, not gonna dance. <laughs> well, full disclosure, I grew up in a household that didn't really have a lot of tolerance for questionable lyrics. In fact, my parents didn't really have a lot of tolerance for really any music that wasn't religious. That's because my father was the minister of the church next door, and he was quite strict about what I could and couldn't listen to. And so out of the songs that I did have access to, I could never really find one that made me feel seen, or heard, or really accepted for the person I truly was. So when no one was looking, I used to sneak out to the church next door, and I used to jump on the church piano, and I used to write my own songs. You know, my music and my lyrics, they help me put my thoughts into feelings. And ever since then, I've been really intrigued by the way that other people use music to connect with their thoughts and feelings. How do different songs affect different people? And how we even measure that? Well, it turns out, Spoiler alert, it's really, really complicated. Um, I mean, we could take, say, Blurred Lines and compare that with one of your favorite songs, and we could ask people to tell us how they feel after each listen. But 
as we all know, songs are so different and unique, right? It's like comparing apples and oranges. It doesn't take into consideration how fast or slow or loud or quiet any given song is. So I kind of realized that if I was to really measure the impact of lyrics on our emotions above and beyond any kind of musical type, that I'd have to start writing my own songs that were really fit for the job. <laughs> so when you write a song, there are so many musical moods to choose from, right? I mean, uh, where do we even start? Luckily, there's been some research that's really helped out with this. Uh, it's research that's really identified three broad musical moods that could help me create three different songs. The first one researcher's name is called Vitality. To me, it kind of sounds like this. It's energetic and joyful, like a bright, sunny morning. The second mood that researchers identified is called sublimity. And sublimity is kind of tender and peaceful, a bit more like a nice, cloudy afternoon. And the third music mood is called unease. Unease. It's a little bit sad and quite tense, like a dark and stormy night, or like a scary movie. So once those three music moods were identified, all I then needed to find was some lyrics. Um, but I wanted to make sure they weren't just my subjective lyrics. I wanted to make sure they were scientifically validated. So I was able to uh, tap into a word list of almost 14,000 words that have been rated from the most pleasant word in the English language all the way down to the most unpleasant word in the English language. And here are essentially 87 of the most pleasant words in the English language. They're songs like, words rather like abundance and give and live. Very positive, right? And so I put those words to the songs. Here's an example of how these words fit in the unease song. This world is abundant. All it ever does is give. So if life has a reason, then the reason is to live. It's quite happy, right? Even though the song sounds a bit sad, it's quite happy. But you know, a world full of just happy songs doesn't really take into account the full spectrum of life, right? So I also crossed to the dark side and scraped that bottom of the barrel and got 87 of the most negative words in the English language. If you're having a bad day, I'm sorry, this is only going to make it worse. <laughs> so I was able to take those words, and in that same song, sounded a little bit like this. This world is deceitful, all it ever does is lie. So if life has a reason, then the reason is to die, die, yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> thank you. It's probably not the most, yeah, positive song to listen to. But anyway, once we had all those songs together, we uh, were able to have essentially three songs, the Vitality, Sublimity, and Unease songs, in their positive and negative condition. So six songs all up. And we're ready to test them with our 122 willing participants who had no idea what they were getting themselves into. Um, all they really knew is they had to listen to every song pretty much in a different order for each participant. And they had to rate whether they felt more aggressive, destructive, and hostile, more antisocial, or more caring, constructive, and helpful, more pro-social. And here is what happened. In that joyful-sounding, positive vitality song with the negative lyrics, people didn't report feeling all that pro-social. It was the same with the Sublimity song with negative lyrics and the Ani song with negative lyrics. But with the Vitality song in that positive lyric condition, participants reported feeling more caring, constructive, and helpful after each listen. It was the same with the Sublimity song and even that stormy sounding Ani song. And this shows us that lyrics really do matter above and beyond whatever music category we put behind it. What's really interesting is that there were some participants in this study 
that didn't even know were changing the lyrics on them from positive to negative, and yet they still reported the same effects of feeling more caring, constructive, and helpful. So maybe, whether we're paying attention or not, we're all lyrics people. So how do we take all this data to help us get more out of our music? Well, for me, it actually begins with what I'm putting into my head. We live in this era of music streaming, which makes me very happy. Uh, essentially, there are so many songs, almost endless songs, that we can stream straight from our own pockets. If only my younger self had any idea of how much music he would someday have access to, he would completely flip his lid. <laughs> But with all this choice, it can sometimes be hard to actually find a song that uh, helps us connect with what we need to in the moment. So I'll tell you what I do. Every time I find a song that I feel helps me somehow level up as a human, I try to name the message that I hear in the song. So say I'm listening and the message of bravery comes up. I'll add that to a new bravery playlist. And then every time that theme continues to emerge in my daily listening, I keep adding those songs to my bravery playlist. It's like creating a playlist prescription for your future self. And then when your future self does need a boost of courage, you reach into your pocket, put on your earbuds, press play on your bravery playlist, and the lyrics meet you right where you're at. You'll find that when you start creating playlists that take both music and words into consideration, you don't just listen to your songs, your songs listen to you. We live in a world where aggression and destruction and hostility are blaring across our TV screens, both in Hollywood and in real life. And so many of us absorb messages that don't really align with that person we want our future self to become. But maybe like Blurred lines back in 2013, you know, maybe some of us are ready to make some clearer boundaries with the ways that we use our music. Looking back, there were quite a few songs from 2013 that did strike a chord with me. There were songs that made me feel seen. Songs that made me feel heard. Songs that made me feel accepted for the person I and you truly are. There were songs like, I want to see you be brave. Yeah. And you're going to hear me roar. What do you remember? I can't change even if I tried, even if I wanted to. Last one was 2013's Same Love. It was a caring, constructive, and helpful anthem that stood in solidarity with the LGBTQIA community. And I distinctly remember the way I used those lyrics back then to help me tap into a, a deep sense of bravery that, honestly, I never even knew I had. Perhaps it's no coincidence that 2013 was also the year that I finally found the courage to come out as gay to my strict religious parents. It was an action that profoundly changed the way that I show up in this world. But reflecting on better lyrics, I was able to finally see my true reflection. And this is how a song can change your life. Words use the power of music to amplify a message. The lyricist Yip Harburg once said that words make you think thoughts. Music makes you feel a feeling, but a song makes you feel a thought. 
And if better lyrics can lead to better thoughts, then those thoughts can shift our actions, and those actions can shape our whole narrative. If life is just one big movie, and you're the main character, then maybe it all starts with the soundtrack. And when we turn up the volume on the right music, it turns out life's not as scary as it once seemed. So, what's your next playlist going to be? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>